This is the lineup then. It's John Cleland and Anthony Reid on the front row. Julian Bailey in there. Patrick Watts right behind. Watch for Patrick. He'll be colourful. Grass, anything he'll use. On row three then, it's Jason Plato and Matt Neal, the current breed. Yeah, they've got an advantage. Kelvin Burt, he'll be sharp as well. And Johnny Cotto, well, he's been a real surprise all weekend. Behind them, we've got Ala Menu, double touring car champion, and Tim Harvey, who's already competed here today. Frank Beeler, he's sharp. Jeff Allen, still tough, but reckons he's rusty. And then behind them, we've got Rob Gravitt and Frank Sittner, both desperately trying to get used to front-wheel drive. Yeah, and stay on the track. And Paul Radisic and Gabriele Tarkini. This will be 94, played over again a decade later. So let's see what happens. And that grid, remember, is uh, was being pulled out of the hat. So it's nothing to do with their actual pace. It doesn't give us any indication who's going to be fastest here. You're just going to have to play along and guess with the rest of us as to who's going to be on the pace. They're just lining into position now, and we're getting all set for the start. It's a 20-lap sprint. That's all they get, 20 laps, not much time, but they're going to go for it. We're all set now for the lights to come on. Uh, get the flag from the back, there we are, and five-second board has been held out. Remember, it's John Cleland in the number 95 car, Anthony Reid in the number six car, Julian Bailey in the number five car. Oh, and it's a jump start there from Anthony Reid, and now they all get going finally. Well, you'd think that Anthony Reid would know how to get off the line, wouldn't you? He's trying to make up for missing the bus, that's all I can think of, as they just steam down into Redgate for the first time, and Cleland makes it. Anthony Reid's been swamped, I think. Yeah, John Cleland, great start from him, but Jason Plato's already getting up on the inside and trying to take second place there. Look, trying to nip through, and I think that... Oh, oh there's contact. <laughs> oh, there's no surprise there. Patrick oh, it's Watts. Patrick Watts on the grass. What did I tell you? That's the neat Patrick Watts. Now, it's not leaving the track that counts. It's where you rejoin. Shut your eyes! He said he was going to take the straight line route. He's been rallying recently, so he likes, he feels more comfortable on the grass. Oh, stand well back and turn your collar up. This is going to get ugly. Yeah, it's going to be tricky, this one. But John Cleland is the man who's taken advantage here, and he's going to try and do, make the most of it. Frank Sittner's at the back at the moment. Jason Plato running in second position. The rest of them up through McLean's. The marker posts are going for a Burton, much as expected. So Plato comes through in second. Tim Harvey's gone well. He's come up to third place, and he started mid-grid. Good effort from Tim. Well, let's not forget back earlier in the in the last decade, Tim Harvey and John Cleland, that violent old title chase they had the year Tim won 92. Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, you're going to bet that Tim's going to try and close up to Cleland. Look, there's a little battle going in here as uh, Ant Anthony Reid there managing to make up another position. He got past Matt Neal. Well, these two have had their dices. Remember what happened at Silverstone this year? It was almost uh, a boxing match in the pit lane afterwards, but well, after they had their incident. And further behind them, we've then got Julian Bailey going well. Johnny Chicotto trying to get past Alain Menu though. Menu on the inside there. And in the number 97 car, Alain's just got the advantage. Oh, more panel damage. And up the bill. Oh, look at them. They're bubbling around like lotto balls, all trying to be picked, aren't they? Jumping car after car, side by side, back down the hill. Plato easy to spot in the blue car, up in second place, side by side down the hill there. That's pretty gutsy stuff there. Kelvin Burt just holding off the affections of Chicotto on the way through. Yeah, Kelvin making up some ground. He's in the number seven car. Further back, you saw Jeff Allen in number four, but it's Cleland with the early lead, but for how much longer? Up and through McLean's now, Cleland still hanging on to it, doing a great old job there because he hasn't peddled these things for a while. He's got Jason Plato right behind him. If Jason wins, everyone's going to cry foul, but all the cars are the same and he's never driven it before. Someone off on the grass, well, I shouldn't really say that, should I? <laughs> well, it's probably bound to be Patrick Watts anyway, so uh, he's just getting used to it once more. Tim Harvey still running in third, and then uh, Anthony Reid closing up in fourth place. Wonderful to see these guys who've battled over the years so much. Cleland uh, holding the lead, and Plato just playing it patiently, I think. He didn't even look for a lunge to get past the Scotsman on that occasion. And they're all bunching up pretty close together. Yeah, back across the stripe for the second time. 16 axe murderers all going nose to tail down into Redgate. Still very close. Plato makes a lunge, goes for the lead in behind Cleland, but Cleland's having none of it. Tries to switch back side by side down the hill. This is going to be interesting. Shut your eyes. Cleland has got it back from Jason Plato, and it was clean as well, would you believe that? I don't think we got a single dent that time as he went back through. Third place still for Tim Harvey, he's got the orange flash on the side of the car, so you can spot that one a little bit more easily. Anthony Reid's there, though, in the number six guy, he's trying to get past Tim Harvey, then there's a little gap back to Matt Neal, Julian Bailey, Alan Menu, and Kelvin Burt, and here we go, Anthony's getting naughty. Indeed, up into... 
McLean's there. You couldn't get dental floss between the pair of them. Coming down the hill there, Reedy's got his eye in. He's actually made a terrific recovery from that full start. I think what happened, he realised he was rolling and stomped on the brakes again. Now he's got going and he's with him. Yeah, he's right there with them. They're going to have to be very careful. He just saw a Johnny Chicotto come through in the number two car. But Anthony Reid now getting alongside Tim Harvey for third place. And Tim's going to have to do something here to protect his position because Reedy is on the inside and surely he's going to take the line into the chicane. Yeah, he's got it just hanging in there. Now, Tim's obviously concentrating on a speedy exit there if he can do it. Matt Neal in the toe there, I think, trying to run with them as well car 92 the year that tim won that's how he got the number the big numbers there are the years the champion won and the guys that haven't been champions as we watch plato now side by side oh. in through redgate oh dear me oh for a say at parts franchise this is going to be colossal cleland definitely tried to shut the door that time but plato's having none of it they're side by side down through craner curves one of the trickiest sections here. Plato now with the inside line into the old hairpin, but they're being ganged up behind by Anthony Reid, and Reid's going to try and nip through as well, but now Harvey's got the run. Great, great restraint there by Anthony Reid, really. He could have run wide there, but everyone stayed on. Another lunge down the inside. Plato leading, Cleland in right behind, and we've got someone off. It's car Bailey. number five. Julian has gone off. Oh, this dear. is tyre marks there on the side of the door. I wonder if you could do some form of DNA testing and work out who it was that took him off. We'll have to do that afterwards. Plato comes through, he's still leading, but look at Anthony Reid, chased by Tim Harvey now. Tim Harvey in the 92 car, that was the year he won the title, but Plato is now in front, and that's danger for everybody. Paul Radisic down in 13th, what's he up to? He's not getting anywhere at the moment. Yeah, normally when he's at the back of the field like that, he goes feral and barges his way through, but that's not happening yet. Look at this compression of cars, oh! there's contact! Slid sideways there. Cal Calvin Burton muscles his way through. Yeah, I think he hit Chicotto and uh, poor old Johnny on the grass as a result, but he's got it back on again with uh, a few bits of plastic gone. What a privilege, Chicotto, Beeler, Bert, Tarquini, Radisic, Gravitz, Sitna, Bailey, rattling all those names off, and they're all in the same race. What a belter. Yeah, now let's just take another little look at this. What was going on? You can have a look here. Oh, Kelvin had a bit of a lunge there. Chicotto was already turning in, but they both got away with it, so fair enough. And Plato is still the man in front. Pacing himself now just a little bit. John Cleland doing a terrific job. They're hanging him right behind him. Then it's Anthony Reid, Tim Harvey, of course, having a great run. Alain Menu in there as well. Lots of old protagonists within a dangerous striking distance of each other. But look how close the field is. It's a tribute to all of these guys that they're still nose to tail. Yeah, absolutely. There's eight seconds covering the 14 cars that are effectively still running properly that haven't had major problems, like Julian Bailey and Frank Sittner, who's dropped back off the uh, group somewhat. But everyone else really still in there. We saw Frank Beeler go through. Uh, he's chased by Giacotto now after that incident. And Patrick Watts as well. Here comes Plato under attack from John Cleland again. And John Cleland's through this time. Manners by Jason as John Cleland just shuts the door. Only just shuts the door. Reedy's on a charge again. I hope he's taking his medication because we're coming down into the first corner and it's getting very tight. Really compressing behind him. Harvey Menu Neil as well. All of them so tight into Redgate. Six laps completed out of the 20. There's still a long, long way to go in this. They can't afford to uh, wear themselves out too quickly. Oh, John Cleland, so far, uh, he's, you know, he's staying awake, he's staying in front, and he's ahead of Jason Plato and Anthony Reid. We've got the, uh, the veterans of the field seem to be leading the youngsters, although, as I said, the baby's in the middle. There's Jason Plato, here he goes. He's gone for it down the inside, and it's going to be... Oh! They've hit each other this time. Oh, it had to happen. Castanet time. The car's slapping together into the right-hander. Cleland, I, can, I know what he's saying, and I can't tell you. Back down the hill we go, and that's moved Anthony Reid up into second place. Everybody trying to capitalise on that. Jason, of course, he's just in a hurry to get home before he's, uh, his local shots for last orders. Tim Harvey's taken advantage of it, too. He's now moved up into third place. And uh, let's just take another look at that. Into the right-hander, John turns in, Jason side by side. Tim will be a little bit familiar with that accident. <laughs> yeah, a little bit like the Porsche race earlier on, wasn't it? So, Plato is still our race leader, but Anthony Reid is right there with him. So, the old current generation are doing quite well at the moment. Yeah, they certainly are, but the older generation was sticking together in the tent before the race. John Cleland to Jeff Allen, whatever you do, don't get too close, because your air intake's on the left, the exhaust is on the left, you'll suck in hot air and slow down. <laughs> Sharing the hot tips. Hot air, I bet there's a load of hot air when these guys get together anyway. Plato and Reid with Harvey still chasing him. Look at this, uh, Kelvin Burt there trying to get past Matt Neal. 
But Matt Neal uh, can do better than that, so he stays ahead of him. And Frank Beeler, I think, is joining into that one. There's Tarkini, he's got ahead of Johnny Cicotto, and he's the fastest man on circuit. He's just on a 1.17.879, so Gabrielli could be one to watch as Kelvin Burt there makes a lunge on Matt Neal. <laughs> makes a lunge, overcooks it, gets a nerf in the back for his trouble, and down the hill they go again, but doesn't lose a place, very lucky. Yeah, it worked for him, didn't it? But uh, it's still Plato, he led by two tenths of a second across the line last time. It's uh, nothing to choose between them, Matt Neal still holding on to sixth place, and there's Frank Beeler in the middle of that group, being chased by Kelvin Burt in the number seven car. Uh, Matt Neal there, just struggling perhaps to stay on terms with the leaders as they head up the hill. Yeah, fair to point out that uh, at the squeal of tyres, I knew I had. To, I looked away from the screen for a moment. I knew someone would be in the kitty litter straight away there. I think it was John, wasn't it, Clellan? I think it was uh, John Clellan who's got off, and the safety car is on track. The well, safety car. The whole trick with these things, especially being turbocharged cars, you need to get the turbo spun up. So a little dab of brake with your left foot, just so you can actually run the boost up against it and try to get a jump on everybody else, because a rolling start is so much different from a standing start. So Jason will back them up, back them up, back them up, then stomp on it early, and there he goes, making the best of it. He's already put two car lengths on Anthony Reid as we go down Tim Harvey in the toe right behind. Yeah, Harvey might get a bit of a run here on Anthony Reid. Reid's on the inside, Tim's trying to come around the outside. No, not on. He's in the 92 car. Right behind him still is Alain Menu, and Jason Plato certainly made the most of that restart, didn't he? He's opened himself up a good four or five car length. Uh, gap over the others, and how do they manage this? They've still been bunched up nicely, and they still managed to all be in a big gap. Oh, a bit of neatness, gentlemen, please, after you. Side by side, slapping into each other all through the crane. curves. Great job there by Matt Neal, somehow to hang on to it, even though he's getting a real wet and dry rub down there from Kelvin Burt, and they're still at it. Kids at play. Now, into the right-hander, trying to find a way around there. Not close enough, but Anthony and Jason, they're just going hammer and tongs. They've still got a fair few bits of say at left, so they might as well keep running with it. Back across the stripe again, lap 12. Here we go then. Anthony Reid, no. I wondered if he was going to be able to go through there, but no, oh, this time he does have a little lunge down the inside. Oh, he's hit him! Plato's on the grass. Oh, he recovers, gets back on again. And he's a bit of a signal. Sorry, mate. <laughs> well, I don't think he is, actually, but he gives him a wave anyway. Maybe it's see you later. He's off. He's in the distance already. <laughs> All you can see is dust in the distance. It's like the cavalry's come to town. If that's a little lunge down the inside, I don't know what a headbutt is. That was very, very firm indeed. But credit to all of these guys. Look at this. They're all running in the same lap times. All of them running around in the 18s. He's oh. off big time, Kelvin Burt. That's a big, big shunt for Kelvin Burt. And, uh, well, they may have to bring the safety car out. That was a hefty one indeed. As uh, we can hear, the safety car, I think, is going to be out. Well, I know they're all coming back to uh, relive their touring car driving careers, but I have to say that's a rather nasty memory of a big shot that Kelvin had at Alton Park some years ago. It certainly was. Kelvin, who won a couple of races that year for Volvo, had his season very much shortened. He's out of the car. That's very good to see, but it was a big side impact. Yes, he had a huge side impact. Let's have another look at this yeah, well, let's see. He must have got a tag from, yeah, got a tag from somebody because you don't go off there unless somebody gives you a tag. And then he slammed into the tyre barrier. It is a tyre barrier there. That will have absorbed an awful lot of the impact, but uh, pretty scary. Now, looking at, uh, what's this still going on? What's going on here? Tim Harvey and Johnny Chicotto have gone off. They haven't got to the safety car yet. <laughs> what is going on? That is outstanding. That's like crashing well, in a warm-up lap. <laughs> well, that just about ends Tim's weekend, doesn't it? He, he could almost have guaranteed that was going to happen after what happened to him earlier on. I've got a traffic warning. Stay away from Junction 23A of the M1. This isn't over yet. They'll be sorting it out on the way home. Work this out. Let's see what was going on here. Now, they were fairly well up. We think the yellows were out at this stage. It all got very bunched up, and, well, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, someone rolled a stun grenade under them all. Oh, look, at that's Kelvin's car. Look at the state of that. The whole side of that car stoved in. I'm not buying that one. I think this all could break loose any moment. Here we go, then. Through the chicane, ready to floor it. Are we set? This is it, then, the climax. And Anthony Reid is right on it straight away out of the chicane. Plato chases after him with Menu then and Frank Bieler chased by Patrick Watts and Gabrielli Tarkini. That's the top six, and Plato's on the move already. 
Yeah, trying to get Brown a very, very sideways. Jason Plater gets it all crossed up. Great save, Jason. Bunches it up, though. That gives Alain Menu a bit of a chance. Menu's going to go it side by side with him. Old teammates, but that's all forgotten. Manners, you've got to be kidding. Try some grass, Jason. Not in your life. Out you go. Into the kitty litter. Sideways. Nerves him up the back. Oh, this is fabulous to watch. Over to the right, Jason. That's the black stuff. Get back on, Jason. Oh, he does. Oh, that's a big It's hit. a goal. <laughs> he's hit by Patrick Watts, and he's off just where Kelvin Burns' car was towed to. What chance did he have there? Oh, Patrick Watts, too much horsepower, not enough grip, and that's just psychologically. I thought he was going to do a mantle then, actually. Look at this once again. Look at the impact. Bosh! Oh, dear, oh, dear. And Patrick Watts, surely, he's not going to be able to be going much further with that car. What would say I'd ever do to him? There, there is Patrick. Oh, he's going to have a bit of a sore neck, I would think, tomorrow after that one. Right, look at this. Good racing going on. Further back, some side-by-side -side stuff down towards the chicane, but Reedy's still leading it. And uh, right behind them now, Menu coming under some serious pressure from Frank Bieler. Oh. Oh, yeah, carrying some real, real pace there through the chicane. Trying to go around the outside. Frank's on a move now. Menu covering. Look at Tarkini. He's in fourth place. So he's right there with them. And we've got some top names here, but Anthony Reid, who's never won the British Touring Car Championship, is now up ahead of some champions. Down towards the right hand of the old pair pin for the last time, carrying lots of speed through there. Nothing wrong with the lines on these guys, crisp and fast as you like. Yeah, but Reid's got that break, hasn't he? He's got two or three car lengths. Here comes Tarkini. Tarkini lining Beeler up for a possible manoeuvre. It's side by side, up towards McLean's, but Beeler fends him off. Yeah, nice driving. Now he's trying the right hand side. That'll really slow him down if he doesn't get that right. Tarkini, you'll need to tuck back unless he can actually force through here. He's trying to force through. This is going to be very, very interesting. Newton's law at play. What's going to happen? They've given each other room, sportsman like, but it's still going to be resolved. A corner to come. So it's just the chicane to go, and Anthony Reid is in front. I don't think many is going to be close enough to attack. Who's going to be third? Who's going to get the podium finish? It's Tarkini who turns in ahead. I think he's got just enough, and Anthony Reid beats all of the former champions. He is the BTCC master. And there we are. He's come through and beaten the great names. Alamenu, Gabrielli Tarkini, Frank Bieler, Matt Neal, John Cleland, Paul Radisic, Jeff Allen. Julian Bailey and Rob Gravett. He got in the top ten there at the end. Good effort from him. Gabrielli, fantastic. You started in the last row. You came through the third fastest lap. Yeah, it was really, really hot because starting from the back of the grid with the same car. So everybody with the same car was uh, was not really easy to overtook people. But it was fantastic because at the last lap, at the last corner, I overtook uh, John and I finished onto the podium. So it's uh, it's quite a dream. You obviously took to the cars, you didn't mind the argy-bargy? <laughs> yeah, I have. No, I saved the car. I, I think that uh, I don't have any big damage. It's a little bit shorter than before, but it's good. Thank yeah. you to Seat to repair the car. Uh, thank you for coming, Gabrielli. And Ala, fantastic. Um, you worked your way through second place. Well done. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy. I mean, uh, I came here to do that race, to uh, first of all, to have fun and enjoy myself, and, and it's exactly what I did. I mean, I don't think I've had that much fun for, for, for many, many years. So uh, I'm very happy and to come from ninth on the grid to second place. Uh, I think the race was very good, very entertaining. And, and yeah, so it was good. Nice Sunday. That's, I just can't believe that. I mean, to beat the best of the best in the same equipment, fantastic. Were you embarrassed about getting the head start being on the front row? So you wanted to throw it away? Yeah, I can't believe I've done so many races today and I was getting sort of uh, like crazy and the lights came on and I, I hadn't started one of these cars before so I, I then had to stop the car and I, I lost a lot of places at the beginning. A little nudge to get past Jason. Yeah, I mean, we've been doing that all year. <laughs> so how does this compare to being the independence champion? In some ways it's better because um, my friend Alain, we came so close in the year 2000, I missed out the championship by two points. It's kind of satisfied to get one over on, on, on this particular occasion. But I have to say thanks very much to Alan Gow for putting this very special race on and also to Seat for providing the cars. It's, it's been just great fun. I really enjoyed it. Brilliant drive, terrific character, and look at that trophy. What, what a trophy. That's fantastic, isn't it? 